Okay, so we have conquered the Paldea region multiple times over using some of the most overpowered creatures in the animal kingdom. First, we started with monkeys and that was a blast. Then we tried our luck with lizards. Well, technically they were reptiles, but now we're going on a journey to eclipse them all using nothing but fish Pokemon. That means defeating every gym, taking out every team star base, slaying every Titan, and then dispose of the Elite Four and become the champion. Oh, and let's not forget about Professor Turo and his Paradox Pokemon. Plus, I added a stack of extra rules that I need to follow just to spice things up for you guys. Will I succeed? Well, yes, that's why I made a video about it. Okay, without any further distractions, let's begin our adventure. So I'm sure we've seen the start of the game a hundred times now, so let's just speed through what happens. I get up from my desk, I let my mum's new boyfriend into the house, he then thanks me by giving us one of his Pokemon, but none of them are fish, so I'm not interested. We make sure Nimona ends up with the grass cat, you know, to make this even harder, and now we're free to go and find our true starter for the run, Magikarp. Get a load of this majestic Pokemon. I hereby give you the name Splash. All right, Nimona, I hope you're ready for a beating. Okay, that did not exactly go to plan. Your moves weren't bad. Not bad at all. Thankfully, this is one of the few fights that we do not need to actually win to progress. So, into Mesa Goza we go. Now, although Nimona will let us progress without a win, Team Star, on the other hand, will not. And with a mandatory battle coming up, we need to add another fish to our roster. The problem is, without our trusty Maridon, we can't leave the current area on the map. Or can we? You see, there's a certain point in the map where we can instant transmission ourselves across, just like Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Well, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. But by coming to the ledge here, we can simply target a Pokemon across, then throw Magikarp to start a battle with it, and now we're across the ledge. The entire map of Paldea is now available to us, and we have access to almost any fish in the game. Well, not quite, as we do have a level cap that we need to stay under, so some of the heavy hitters will be safe in the ocean for now. With that in mind, there is a tiny fish here with a low level of 4. Aracuda. This thing is rapid, so I give it the name Speed. Although, for some reason, this thing has decided to have a nap. Come on, Speed. You haven't even done anything yet. Now that we have a usable Pokemon, we head up the stairs and take on the Team Star Punks who are bullying this poor girl. Although, this poor girl is also their boss, and their boss wants Team Star disbanded, but also does not want to disband them herself. Yeah, it's complicated. Anyway, we just take them out and move along. Our first test is to squash some bugs, so we head to Katie's gym that isn't far away. But on the way there, we come across a raid den with a Finneon. I'm gonna call you Doug. Look, Doug ain't the best Pokemon in the world, but it's a fish and that's good enough for me. Okay, let's show Katie who's boss. Katie leads with a Nimble and a couple of pecs from our boy Speed takes care of it. She then brings in a spider trapped in a ball of yarn, Tarantula, which like the nimble, goes down to a couple of pecks. Finally, it's her ace, Tertiosia, who we can peck once before this little bear slashes speed with a fury cutter. Doug comes in, confuses the Tertiosia by using some water pulses, and then we can watch Katie's last Pokemon take itself out. The Titan Cloth is next up, and our boy Doug is the star of the show. This giant crab has no answers to our rain-boosted water pulses, and it runs for its life. It then eats some illegal herbs, which does power it up, but in phase two, Doug is just too strong for this thing. Oh, and I haven't helped, kinda. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little worried about our next fight against Brassius. Normally he isn't much of a threat, but with my team of sea creatures, we are really in a disadvantage. But there is one Pokemon, one fish, that is the answer to all my problems. Quillfish. Now, according to Bulbapedia, you can find these things as low as level 15, which is below the Brassius level cap. But I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and this stupid little toxic spike ball was always overleveled. I feel defeated. Could Bulbapedia be wrong? Maybe? But then what do I do? And then it came to me. First thing I need to do is catch a female quillfish. 
And yes, I know it's over leveled, but just calm down, all right? Next, we enjoy a lovely meal, specifically a Salisbury steak with fried fillings. After whining and dining the quillfish with Doug, we set up a picnic nearby for them to, well, you know, make babies. Well, technically eggs. Then we collect our eggs from the basket, add them into our party, then hatch a brand new baby level one quillfish. I named this toxic bald gamer, and now we have what we need to take on Brassius. Oh, and I also found a bar boat in a raid den nearby, but being four times weak to grass, Whiskers here will just be moral support for the Brassius fight. Brassius isn't messing around, jumping off a windmill that should have probably killed him, then pulls out a crazy smile that is kind of freaking me out, to be honest. Gamer truly shows how toxic he can be by terrestrializing and then one-shotting the petty lil with a poison sting. Smolov comes in, but also stands no chance getting one-shotted with a poison sting also. Sudowoodo does us a favor by terrestrializing, allowing a poison sting to do more than half, while a trailblaze does 10 damage back, and even with a speed boost, Gamer is still faster, outspeeding, and finishing off the Sudowoodo. The Open Sky Titan Bombardier is our next target, and this thing is a menace. Plus, it's the only Titan fight that doesn't allow you to heal between phases. Without much of a plan, we head up the mountain, dodging some boulders, and then we get the attention of the Titan. Whiskers starts off surviving a rock throw pretty well before landing a spark doing decent damage. Then this thing just ends Whiskers' life with a wing attack. Doug takes the stage, but we can only get up one water pulse before the giant bird takes us out. Now it's speed, and two Aqua Jets does whittle this thing down, but we're running out of Pokemon. Gamer comes in, terrestrializes and then takes significant damage from a wing attack before finishing off the first phase with a poison sting. The giant bird retreats and our savior Ivan comes to help us out and boy do we need him. The second phase begins and Splash comes out. Yeah, I didn't realize that Gamer was positioned below Splash. What can you do? We splash around a couple of times, doing absolutely nothing, while Arvin's Knackley is carrying the fight, landing rock throws and smackdowns. Splash eventually falls, allowing Gamer to come in and terrestrialize. Bombardier lands a brutal pluck, but Gamer holds on with 7 HP, while also poisoning the bird because of Poison Point. Gamer then goes for a huge, terrestrialized Poison Sting, which is just short from getting the kill. Arvin's Knackley comes in and cleans up the mess with one final rock throw, and that's the Titan taken care of. Now that we have a level cap of 21, our boy Splash can finally reach level 20 and, well, not evolve. As much as I'd love to have a Dragon Dancing Gyarados to destroy his way through Powdia, this thing isn't a fish. So yeah, I, I can't let it evolve. Although we have missed out on the Gyarados, there is an encounter that is close by that we can get our hands on, Basculin. Okay, it's not quite a Gyarados, but we can't exactly be picky right now. All right, let's talk about Team Star. These guys are the equivalent of Team Rocket or Team Plasma from previous games. Okay, maybe they're not about to try and take over the world with Pokemon, but there's still a group in this game that needs to be taught a lesson. And now it's about time we pay one of them a visit. First up is the Dark Base and the leader Giacomo, who apparently made their theme song, which is a banger to be honest. Whiskers leads and starts off with a mud shot, doing just over half damage to the Pornard. An aerial ace comes our way, doing big damage, but we just survive. Now, I could go for a second mud shot, which will guarantee the kill, but I have a better idea. We go for a water pulse, which leaves a Pornard in the red before it finishes off Whiskers with an aerial ace. In comes Gamer, who has a move called Fell Stinger, which, if used to knock out a Pokemon, it will drastically boost our attack stat. So we end the Pornard's life and, um, excuse me? Why didn't I get a boost? This move literally says, when the user knocks out a target Pokemon with this move, the user's attack is drastically boosted. To make things worse, the Starmobile comes in and actually drops my attack with Intimidate, making me weaker. Because of this, I switch in Splash, whose sole purpose is to just come in and then die. Yeah, I know it's kind of cruel and I'm not treating Pokemon with love and respect and all that stuff, but this allows Gamer to come back in without his attack being dropped. And it pays off as Gamer finishes off the car and we've beaten Giacomo. So far, things have been going pretty swimmingly. Yes, that pun was intended. But what we have up next could be a big problem for our school of fish, Iono and her electric Pokemon. Now we do have Whiskers, who is part ground type, 
but this thing is incredibly weak. I mean, a pine cone, tadpole, and even a flower all have higher base stat totals than it. So you can see the problem. Nimona does also want to battle us, so we dispose of her team with ease and no mate, you're not allowed to evolve. You're doomed to be a magic up forever. Iona starts off with a watch roll and I have speed land an aqua jet before a spark from the watch roll brings us very low. Another aqua jet leaves the watch roll on a slither and then it takes out speed with a second spark. Okay, here's where I get a little controversial. Just a moment ago, I tried this against Giacomo and well, it failed miserably, but I'm not a quitter and I know that this strat can work and not only work, but be a game changer if implemented. So I try it again. In comes Gamer, who lands a Fell Stinger, taking out the Watch Roll, and it works. Our attack has now been drastically risen, making it at plus three in attack. Belly Bolt gets one-shotted by Poison Tail, although I do think the crit mattered. Luxio drops our attack with Intimidate, meaning that it will just survive a Poison Tail, which is perfect, as now I can follow up with another Fell Stinger, taking it out, and drastically raising my attack even further. Finally, it's Miss Magius, who throws a spanner in the works as it lands a Confuse Ray, confusing Gamer, but we fight through the confusion and end this electrical ghost life with a Poison Tail. With another gym badge in the bag, I decided that our team needs some bolstering. First up, we run into one of the new Pokemon in this generation, the loser. Um, you can be Jaws. Then it's another new Pokemon and one of my personal favorites, Finizen who gets the name All Might. Continuing to strengthen the team, Speed also can evolve into an Aracuda. Now, there's a point in every run where there's an upcoming battle that will push you to your very limits when coming up with strategies and tactics to get the win. And up next, we have a team star battle with the Fire Master herself, Mela. Yeah, she's not one of those battles. What, you didn't really think that my team of fish would struggle against a fire team now, did you? The lurking still tied on Orthwim is next up, so we track it down and we start the battle. I lead with Whiskers and Orthwim hits us with a wrap while we retaliate with a mud slap, but yeah, I completely forgot about its ability, Earth Eater. Eh, whoops. We go back and forth for a bit using water pulses until eventually an Iron Tail takes out Whiskers. Doug comes in and a couple more water pulses puts an end to the first phase. The giant worm then eats his vegetables, giving him a power up. Together with Arvin, the Titan stands no chance against us, and one final grass knot from his toad scroll puts an end to the battle. I'm not gonna lie, this next battle is personal. Kofu from Kaskarafa is a water type master, and well, my team of fish are all water types. And I have no intentions of sharing the title of best water type user in Paldea, so I really want to teach Kofu and his team a lesson. As expected, the mere sight of me has Kofu running away as he's aware of what's about to happen. However, I chase down Kofu, beat up his apprentice, spend the man's money on some seaweed, and then finally he agrees to battle me back at Kaskarafa. Oh, and before I forget, with a new level cap, Whiskers can also evolve into Wishcash, giving us a powerful counter for electric moves. Kofu leads with the loser, and our newly evolved Whiskers takes charge for us, landing a spark, which is just short from doing half damage, while an Aqua Cutter barely tickles us. As we're holding leftovers, we protect between turns, getting extra health recovery. Three spikes later, we send the loser to its grave, and Whiskers is looking pretty healthy. Well, Trio is next in, and using the same strategy, we can protect between turns and fry the Wog Trio with a couple of sparks. Finally, it's his Ace Crabobinable, who we can whittle down with a couple of sparks, but ultimately, Whiskers can't hold on and falls to back to back slams. Although it's futile for Kofu, as Speed replaces Whiskers and can hit the crab with a couple of throat chops, ending its life and getting the win. What a pure display of dominance over Kofu, leaving no doubt on who the true king of the sea is. But this is just the beginning, and we can shift our focus towards the Toxic Team Star base and their leader, Atticus. But before I take on the Toxic student, Doug is able to evolve, which is a decent upgrade to be fair. Whiskers gets sucker punched from the Skun Tank, but we follow up with a Mud Slap, dealing decent damage back. As I'm holding leftovers, we go for a Protect to get some extra health back, while the Sucker Punch fails. On the second turn, I misclick, trying to protect again, which obviously fails, but even more annoyingly, the Skun Tank ends up going for Toxic, poisoning me. Great. We take another Sucker Punch before finishing off the Skunk with a second Mud Slap. River Room drives in and hits us with an Iron Head, leaving us low, but a Mud Slap is quite effective, absolutely destroying this Toxic car. Now it's Muck, and we can land a Mud Slap on this pile of gunk before a Sludge Wave, 
followed up with the toxic damage, takes its toll on Whiskers, ending his life. Speed then gets some revenge for us as a terrestrialized dive sends a muck to its grave. The Starmobile is Attica's last line of defense, and I tell you what, terrestrialized dives from Speed do massive damage, allowing us to take out the giant car on the third hit. Okay, let's do a quick recap. So far, we've defeated four gym leaders, slayed three Titan Pokemon, and raided three Team Star bases, which is a solid effort if I do say so myself. Larry is next up, and fun fact about this fight is that we also need to face Nimona straight after without any chance to adjust our team. But I'm confident, so let's go. Jaws gets some love and flits away against the Kamala, raising my stats but dealing some big damage back to us. Kamala then lands a yawn, making us drowsy, which is a problem as I equipped leftovers on Jaws instead of a Chesto Berry. We protect him the next turn as we need leftovers recovery before we fall asleep. Kamala then sucker punches, but we fast asleep, so yeah, it, it won't hit us. Jaws does wake up and we go for another protect allowing to get some more health back from leftovers before setting up one more time with Fillet Away, only to be yawned again. Yep, I got greedy and I got punished. Sucker Punch fails from Kamala and then we get lucky as a slam misses us on the next turn. On the third turn, we're still asleep and a slam lands, leaving us on three HP. Jaws finally wakes up, outspeeds and kills a Kamala, which took a lot longer than it should have. The Dunsparce is next in and a plus four stab Aqua Cutter is not enough to one shot this bulky boy, allowing it to respond with a drill run, taking out Jaws. Yet yeah, all that time spent setting up wasted. Doug comes in and can land a water pulse which doesn't quite get the kill but it does confuse the Dunsparce and then it takes itself out with confusion. Larry's last Pokemon is Staraptor and water pulses does bring out low but terrestrialized facades are too much for Doug and he's KO'd. Thankfully All Might can Aqua Jet this bird dealing enough damage to take it out and beating Larry. Normally we would have time to make some changes before the next battle, but for some reason, Game 3 throws it out the window and forces us into a Nimona battle. To be fair, this is one of the few story fights in the game that lets us progress regardless if you win or not, but I have my pride on the line, so we make short work of Nimona's team, and thanks to Gamer, we have a perfect counter to a huge threat, Miascara. Montenevera is our next destination, so we head to the snowy mountains of Paldia. Wait, 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 I almost forgot about one of the most important things that happen in the run. By creating a union circle with, um, myself, yeah, I don't have many friends, I can use a rare candy on All Might to evolve him into a Palafin, which basically looks identical, but his true power shows in battle. I'll show you what I mean in the next fight against Rhyme. We start off with Speed and Jaws, and Jaws gets absolutely destroyed from a Shadow Sneak and then a Sucker Punch, pathetically falling before it could do a thing although that's technically my fault. And Speed breaks Mimikyu's disguise with a throat chop. All Might comes in to replace Jaws, and this time Burnett lands a sucker punch on Speed. Speed goes for a throat chop on the Mimikyu, but it survives comfortably before a slash brings Speed into the orange. All Might flip turns on the Mimikyu, which is still not enough damage to take it out, but he's activated his hero form while bringing in Whiskers. An Aqua Jet from Speed finally puts an end to Mimikyu, but Burnett returns a favor with a Shadow Sneak, taking out Speed. Whiskers does mudslap the Burnett, but more excitingly, All Might comes back in in its hero form. All Might Jet punches the Burnett, sending it straight back to Rhyme, while Whiskers hits the Houndstone with a Water Pulse. Houndstone then uses Phantom Force, disappearing, while Rhyme brings in Toxtricity. All Might then Jet punches the Terrestrialized Toxtricity, bringing him below half health, and a Water Pulse from Whiskers is just short from the kill. Toxtricity goes for a Hyper Voice, doing minimal damage on both All Might and Whiskers, before Houndstone lands a Phantom Force, bringing All Might pretty low. On the next turn, a Jet Punch does take out the Toxtricity, and Whiskers goes for a Water Pulse on the Houndstone, which also confuses the dog. Houndstone goes for another Phantom Force, and successfully vanishes. But on the next turn, Houndstone hits itself with Confusion, dealing damage to itself instead of attacking. All Might then wraps up the fight with one last Jet Punch, sending the Houndstone back to its grave. We are starting to make some serious progress, and let's just say that my team of fish are passing with flying colors at the moment. Up next, we have a Titan battle against none other than the Quaking Earth Titan, and, well, this thing is actually pretty easy to deal with. Whiskers can terrestrialize and water pulse it down in the first phase, and then in the second phase, it's even easier, as Ivan Skullvillian is chipping him with Fire Fangs, but ultimately, it's Whiskers who delivers a final blow, putting an end to the Titan, and Whiskers looks happy about that. 
Next up, we have the makeup specialist, Tulip, and a psychic type to deal with. Whiskers once again takes the lead against Farigarath, and the plan here is to outlast this thing by earthquaking and then protecting every second turn to get extra leftovers recovery. Eventually, we do get the kill, forcing Tulip's Gardevoir in, which has energy balls, so yeah, Whiskers is dead now. Gamer tags in, which sounds crazy, bringing in a poison type in a psychic gym, but Gardevoir is also part fairy, meaning poison jabs absolutely destroy it. Espartha comes in next, and for some reason, instead of letting Gamer die, allowing a clean switch, I hard switch in Jaws, who eats a psychic well. On the next turn, however, we're hit with a big shadow ball, bringing us low, while an aqua cutter does just over half health to the emu. One more shadow ball is enough to take out Jaws, and now I can bring in All Might safely. Espartha does outspeed, landing a big psychic, but we survive the hit and can flip turn out to activate Zero to Hero while almost taking out the Espartha. Speed comes in, aqua jetting the emu, getting the kill, and forcing in Tulip's last Pokemon, Florges. A throat chop from Speed does massive damage, but an incoming Moonblast is just way too strong, taking out Speed. On the bright side, All Might does come back in and sends the Florges packing with a Jet Punch, getting the win and beating Tulip. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. We have but just one more gym leader in a way before we can take on the Pokemon League. Well, there's also a Titan Pokemon and a couple of Team Sub bases as well, but you know what I mean. We travel back to the bitter cold at the top of the mountains of Paldea where we can find the ex snowboarder Grusha. Now, as this is the last gym leader, the final test, the ultimate challenge for students who are looking to become champion rank, you would expect this to be a difficult and grueling battle, one that would push me and my fish to our very limits. Well, it turns out if you have All Might with Bulk Up and Drain Punch, this gym is completely free. Drain Punch after Drain Punch, we KO Grush's Pokemon, except see Titan, as this boy is actually pretty thick, but eventually we land the finishing blow on Altaria, defeating Grusha. Alright, time for another quick update. We have now cleared 8 out of the 8 gym leaders, 4 out of the 5 titans, and 3 out of the 5 team star bases. So naturally, team star is going to be my next target, and the closest base to me is the fairy base and the leader Ortega. Gamer is in no mood to mess around, so I terrestrialize our toxic fish and then just one shot the Azumarill with a poison jab. Wigglytuff jumps in and suffers the same fate being one-shotted by a poison jab. Now it's dash bun, and even this thing crumbles to a poison jab from Gamer. Finally, it's their Starmobile, who lands a huge critical steel roller on Gamer before we retaliate with a massive poison jab, doing almost half its health. A rapid spin in return does put an end to Gamer, but he did his job. From this point, everyone actually chips in, dealing damage to the Starmobile before All Might comes in and ends a battle with a jet punch without using his hands, I might add. Right, without dealt with, we have one last Titan Pokemon to track down and defeat. Well, it's technically two of them, and guess what? They are both fish Pokemon, and I want my own Dodonzo and Tatsugiri for my team. First, we run into an orange Tatsugiri, who may be tiny, but this thing packs a punch. And then not too far away, we find ourselves a thick Dondonzo, who is one of my favorite new Pokemon in Paldia. As the level cap has gone up and we have our final team for the run, now's a good time to have a picnic with our school of fish. School of fish, that, that's the correct term, right? Anyway, we make a magnificent ham sandwich. I mean, just look at this thing. And then once we eat it, we can end the picnic and start fighting the chances that spawn for that sweet EXP they give. With our newly assembled team of powerful fish, we make our way towards the final Titan Pokemon that need to be slayed. Whiskers can 1v1 the Dondonzo, and after a few sparks from our catfish, the Dondonzo swims away. The second phase is very similar, although this time we do have Ivan's Greedent, who pitches in dealing damage. Eventually, it's had enough, and it drowns. Last is the Tatsugiri, and although Whiskers can get it low with Earthquakes, the Titan Pokemon is too strong, taking us out. We fight fire with fire, bringing in Sally, and back-to-back -back Dragon Pulses from our superior fish is enough to slay the Titan Pokemon and get the win. This is it, the last Team Star base, the fighting type base, and their leader, Eerie. She's actually quite intimidating when you look at her, but my fish and I are ready to take her down. All Might starts us off and goes for a flip turn on the Toxicroak, dealing damage while bringing in Gamer, who can easily eat a poison jab. I then switch All Might back in, this time into his hero form, and because Toxicroak went for a sucker punch, we get in for free. Now All Might can start bulking up, 
raising his attack and defense, while the Frogger is hitting us with poison jabs in return. We get to plus three in both attack and defense before a poison jab does actually poison us, but I came prepared with a Petra Berry, which means it cures us from the poison. Not wanting to risk being poisoned again, we go for a Jet Punch, which is more than enough to take out the Toxic Frog. Passman comes in with his Coconut and surprisingly survives a plus three Drain Punch from All Might. It responds with a close combat that doesn't hurt much before a second Drain Punch takes it out while also healing us. Annihilate is a Ghost type, so this time we have to use Jet Punches, which once again, this thick boy somehow survives. Just like the previous monkey, a close combat doesn't hurt too much, and a second jet punch gets the kill. Lucario is a different story, as the drain punch is super effective and will one-shot it, while completely healing me back up. Finally, it's the Starmobile, and we terrestrialize and start jet punching this hunk of junk over and over again, until it's taken out, and we get the win. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for us to take on the end game. First up is Rika, and she leads with an inferior version of Whiskers. Well, I start with your mama. Wishcash hits us with an Earth Power, but we take the hit well while going for a dive hiding underwater. Look, don't ask me how that works when we're battling on solid concrete. It just does, okay? It misses the next Earth Power as we are underwater, and then we land a dive doing respectable damage, all while getting leftovers healing for each turn. We repeat this three times, and eventually the catfish goes down while staying relatively healthy. Donphan comes in, and we can repeat the process, although this time we're getting hit with earthquakes. Once the second dive lands, we take out the Don Fan, although your mama is low on health at the moment. Dugtria enters the fray and surprisingly goes for a sandstorm, allowing your mama to once again use dive and take it out in one hit. Camera up is next and lands a yawn as your mama goes for another dive, taking it out on the second turn before falling asleep. Klotzai is her ace, and this thing has water absorb, so he hard switch in Whiskers, who gets in for free as Klotzai goes for a protect. Whiskers then lands an earthquake on the Klotzai, but the Klotzai returns the favor with an earthquake of its own. We trade blows a couple of times until Whiskers comes out victorious, beating Klotzai, and more importantly, Rika. Poppy is next up, and yes, somehow this toddler is a member of the Elite Four. All Might leads against a Copperaja, and we flip turn out of there, bringing in Gamer, who eats a play rough as he comes in. Gamer then sets up with some spikes before the elephant goes for a super effective high horsepower, which doesn't kill us somehow. All Might gets hard switch back in, taking a high horsepower well on the switch. We then set up with a bulk up, raising my attack and defense stats before we get hit with a play rough. I decide to go on the attack, and a Drain Punch does enough damage to crush the Copperaja. Magnazone is next in, and we break it sturdy thanks to the spike, but of course, a plus one super effective Drain Punch is just not enough to get the kill. Thankfully, it goes for a Light Screen, which is fine, as we're using physical attacks. See ya, Magnazone. Now it's Corviknight, and this metal bird takes neutral damage to Drain Punches, doing about one third of its health. It then sets up with an Iron Defense, doubling its physical defense stat. From here, we start trading blows as we go for Drain Punches, while Corviknight goes for Body Presses, but eventually All Might holds on, and we come out on top. Bronzong is in next, and back-to-back -back Jet Punches is enough to take out the bell, meaning Poppy is now left with just her ace, Tinkerton. This little fairy with a giant hammer comes in and terrestrializes, and then takes massive damage from a jet punch before missing her play rough. Yeah, not a good turn for Poppy. One more jet punch from All Might, and that's Poppy and her still types taken care of. Now it's Larry who wants a rematch, but this time he's ditched the normal types and he's gone with some flying type Pokemon. Speed leads away, and right off the bat, a quad effective Ice Fang can eliminate his Tropius. Seraptor then comes in and drops our attack with Intimidate, so I hard switch your mama into a Brave Bird, which we actually take pretty well. Plus, we get some extra leftovers recovery, keeping us healthy. Another Brave Bird comes our way, but this time we respond with an Ice Fang, which is just short from the kill. For the third time, we get hit with a Brave Bird, but one more Ice Fang can get the kill. Oh, we, we missed. Great. Thanks for that. Seraptor this time goes for a facade, but your mama can just hold on and then take one last icy chomp at the bird, ending its life. Altaria comes in and can outspeed your mama, KOing her with a Dragon Pulse. Now it's Speed who switches in and can get revenge for us as a four times effective Ice Fang destroys the dragon. Now it's Oracorio, and we go for an Ice Fang, which is so close to the kill, but unfortunately it does survive and a super effective critical hit revelation dance puts an end to speed for the rest of the battle. Whiskers tags in and can take an air slash easily before finishing off the cheerleading bird with a waterfall. Larry now sends in his ace flamingo, 
who terrestrializes and lands a huge brave bird on whiskers, but somehow we do survive the hit and follow up with a spark which brings Flamingo below half health. As expected, a second brave bird does defeat whiskers, forcing another Pokemon in. This time it's Gamer who makes an appearance and now Toxic Boy gets hit hard with a brave bird, but survives the hit before landing a poison jab on the Flamingo, taking it out and beating Larry for the second time. Hassel and his Dragon Pokemon is now the only thing standing between me and the champion Gita. Traditionally, Dragon Trainers are some of the most fierce battles you can have a Pokemon, but unfortunately for Harry, I have Sally. Sally leads the fight against Noivern, who outspeeds and brings me exactly to half health with the Super Fang. But now Sally can just terrestrialize and use Dragon Pulses to murder every single one of Hassel's Pokemon. Well, except for Baxcalibur, who does survive the hit. Baxcalibur then obliterates Sally with a Glaive Rush. From here, Speed comes in and takes a chomp at the Baxcalibur with an Ice Fang, and that's Hassel and his entire team of dragons dealt with. And now, my loyal viewers, we must head outside and take on the champion, Gita. All Might starts a fight, and Flip turns his way out of there, bringing in Speed, only for Espartha to set up a Reflect, which is kind of bad. Because of the Reflect, a Throat Chop isn't even close to taking out the Emu, and the Lumina Crash brings us below half health. Speed can then go for another Throat Chop, which surprisingly is enough to get the kill on Espartha. Gita brings in Gagot, and an Ice Fang doesn't do too much damage because of the Reflect, and Gagot can hit us with a Horn Leech, taking us out and healing itself back up. Gamer is the perfect counter, so he comes in, terrestrializes, and then lands a huge Poison Jab, which doesn't quite get the kill, but still poisons the Gagot. Gagot goes for a bulk up, which could have been scary, but we have a secret weapon, Felstinger. Well, at the time I thought it was a secret weapon, but it turns out it really wasn't. Anyway, it drastically raises my attack by three after taking it out. Avalo comes in, and this thing is a huge physical defense wall, surviving the poison jab while almost killing Gamer with an earthquake. One more poison jab does get the kill, but now it's King Gambit, a Pokemon immune to poison. Great. We hit it very hard with a waterfall, but as expected, it survives the hit and then kills Gamer with a Zen headbutt. So much for a secret weapon, huh? All Might has seen enough, so I bring in our superhero, who can bulk up twice on the King Gambit while eating some Koto Cleaves in return. Once at plus two, we go for a Drain Punch, knocking the King off his throne. The loser also is not a threat, and we can just punch it a few times, taking it out. Finally, it's an Ace Glamora, and surprisingly, this thing actually survives a Drain Punch from All Might, but it doesn't matter, as we can tank a Sludge Wave and then finish it off with a Jet Punch afterwards. And ladies and gentlemen, we have finally beaten Gita and become champion. Wait, 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 wait. Don't click off the video. We aren't done just yet. After making light work of Arvin, Director Clavel, Penny, and even Nimona, we get access to Area Zero where the true final battle is waiting for us, Professor Turo. Well, technically it's not the Professor, but an AI version of him, but you get the point. So once we reach this very expensive looking room, we can start the battle. All Might takes a lead and hits the Iron Moth with a flip turn, doing surprisingly good damage while switching in Whiskers into a discharge that doesn't affect him. Iron Moth then hits us with an Air Slash, but Whiskers shows him his boss by earthquaking this thing to its death. Iron Thorns is an, uh, an odd choice to bring in actually. I mean, it's four times weak to my Stab Earthquake. So yeah. Looks like AI Turo is already glitching. Now it's Iron Bundle, and this thing is fast and hits hard. It lands a freeze dry on Whiskers, and I stood no chance surviving the hit. Gamer comes in, and I terrestrialize our toxic hero, who still takes massive damage from a freeze dry, while Iron Bundle comfortably survives a terrestrialized poison jab, although it does get poisoned. Then for some very random reason, it goes for a snowscape. Yes, instead of taking me out, it just starts making it snow, which, considering that we're so far underground Paldia, it is quite impressive, but that's not the point. All right, bye now. Gamer's victory is short-lived, as a Dark Pulse from the Iron Jugglers does take us out, but I'm done messing around, so I bring in All Might. All Might can start bulking up in front of this bootleg Hydreigon, while being hit with Dark Pulses for minimal damage. We do this two more times, getting the plus three in attack and defense, making us unstoppable. We go on the attack, hitting the Iron Jugglers with a Drain Punch, almost taking it out in one hit. The Iron Jugglers then makes one last attempt to kill All Might with a Dark Pulse, but it fails miserably and falls to a second Drain Punch. Iron Hands could be a problem, as the Drain Punch is only able to do about half health to this thick boy, but thankfully the Thunder Punch doesn't hurt too much, 
and we don't get paralyzed. A second drone punch doesn't get the kill and we could have been in trouble if his thunder punch paralyzed us, but thankfully it didn't. So yeah, you die now. And finally, Tura brings in his ace, Iron Valiant. We go for a jet punch, which is ridiculously close to KOing the Paradox Pokemon, but it doesn't and we get tickled by a spirit break in return. This means on the next turn, a jet punch can land, finishing off Professor Turo's last Pokemon and giving us the win. With that, we have beaten Pokemon Violet using nothing but fish. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.